Hey guys, today we're going to welcome back to the channel and welcome to a bit of a different video today. Uh, so it is a staple speaks, but this is going to be way more different than what I've usually done. Usually in the past I've detailed, you know, what I want and what I think. However, this time I am going to be detailing one of probably football's greatest stories and one of football's most interesting stories. Now, warning... This may get a bit political. I am going to talk about some political aspects, but it's none that I endorse or support or go against as well. Because this is happening very far away from me. Because I'm in India, and this is all about Argentina, Spain, that kind of area. And I'm going to be detailing the connection between two people who have influenced history. One being Paul Del Rio, one of the world's best modern artists, and one of probably the greatest players of all time, Alfredo Di Stefano. Let's see what's the link. So I'll start by detailing, detailing Paul Del Rio's um, past. Now he was born in Cuba after his family was kicked out by Francesco Franco from Spain. Now Francesco Franco is the legendary leader of Spain. And uh, he was known for being a very influential leader in Spain's history. This is all just a history lesson to get us into this interesting story. His family used to oppose Francesco Franco's regime. And when they went to Cuba, they had Paul. And then they moved down to Venezuela to form the FALN, which was one of the biggest anti uh, democracy groups in Venezuela. They were, in fact, the biggest. And Paul, in viewing his parents, decided to join it. And he joined it very young. And the moment he was joined, he was given the pseudonym Maximo Canales. This name is very important. And this is one of the many things that lead us to this story. So now is when the story actually begins. We start with Real Madrid in the 60s, one of the best teams ever made. They were just hot of winning five, yes, five consecutive Champions Leagues, which is paling compared to the Real Madrid today. Now, this Real Madrid team was known to be beloved by Francesco Franco's regime, and he adored the team, and he gave them certain things. Now, one time, uh, the Real Madrid team of the 60s went to Carrascas in Venezuela for a friendly and they were having a lot of fun and they one day decided that they would go on a night out. Now in this night out we found out that Alfredo was having a bit of a headache. Alfredo Di Stefano that is. He was having a bit of a headache. That was understand understandable because he was 38 at the time yet he was still one of the best players in the world and still lovingly referred to as the blonde arrow. Now this was the twilight part of his career, but he was still one of the best footballers at his time. So he goes to the hotel a bit early, saying he has a headache, and then suddenly he's greeted by a few people. They tell him to change out of his clothes, they blindfold him, and they take him out into a car. He has been kidnapped. Now, this is where the story gets really interesting. So... He gets kidnapped and he's blindfolded and he thinks that he's going to die. And he is being carted out to El Silencio, which is uh, the warehouse district in the center of Carrascas in Venezuela. And he thought that he was going to be shot in the head and he thought that he was going to be liquidated and he thought that he wouldn't be able to see anyone ever again. Now, his manager at the time, Damien Gaudier, he went to Alfredo's room later on in the night, check how he's doing, to find out a note on the bed saying a num uh, right, written a number and the number was found out to be of the Venezuelan newspapers and it was reported the blonde arrow has been kidnapped. So now this is interest. Now this is the interesting part, and this is where we get the meeting between Paul Del Rio and Alfredo Di Stefano. 
Now, Alfredo finally wakes up to see a man in front of him who identified himself as the head of the entire operation to kidnap him. And the man's name was Maximo Canales. Now, the thing was that Maximo told Alfredo that he didn't want to kill him. He had absolutely no intentions of hurting him. He just wanted him to draw attention. Now, at this point, the FALN still did not have a lot of influence in Venezuela. So, kidnapping Alfredo Di Stefano was a huge move and brought so much media attention that this is a major turning point in the entire move against a democratic government in Venezuela, which was what they were campaigning against. Now, in this, they were giving Alfredo whatever he asked for, and there is a really famous picture that's been shared to the entire media, and this was proof that, in fact, the FALN did kidnap Alfredo, but they had no intentions of hurting him. As you can see, that's the two of them just playing checkers and chess, nothing else. So at this point, Alfredo had relaxed a bit, but he was still scared about this. And that was all removed when uh, Maximo ordered that they had done what they had needed to and they let him go. Now, this became a very public story and now the world found out. And in a slight change, Alfredo Di Stefano did play the friendly that they had gone to Carascas for. He played that night and he got greeted with a standing ovation with the fans not knowing how he was doing and what was really his condition until this photo was released, maybe two days or three days after the thing. So now this story reaches all the way to 2005. Now at this time, um, Alfredo Di Stefano is a legend and probably considered one of Real Madrid's best players of all time. I still think that he is the best player of all time. For Real Madrid, if we're just talking about Real Madrid achievement alone. And at this point, Paul Del Rio had become one of the most influential artists of the 20th century and had probably become one of the greatest modern artists that we know. So, in 2005, when Real La Pelicula, which means Real the movie, they were making a movie for Real Madrid and they were inviting all these superstars, this Beckham, Carlos, uh, all these people to watch the movie, they decided to invite Paul Del Rio and Alfredo Di Stefano to try and bring them together, to try and get that sweet publicity. Oh, they really do love it. Now, they did meet, and Alfredo got up to him and said, you put my family through a lot of stuff. I don't want to talk to you. Though you treat me nice, my family started to fear. I didn't like that. And he walked away, and we didn't get that handshake that the publicity really deserved. And in a shocking turn of events, they both would die within a year of each other. And maybe this brings this entire conspiracy or this entire football fairy tale to a close. Anyways, thank you so much for watching the video. If you like it, please like, share and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I hope you like this different style of video because I really love researching for it. And I've, when I found out about this story, I just knew I had to bring it to you guys because this is quite possibly one of the most interesting stories I've ever found in relation to football or in relation to anything really. So if you liked it, please put it down in the comments below and leave me any of your suggestions. And anyway, until the next event, peace.